Hello, hello, and welcome to Cat's Treasure Hunting. I'm Cat. That is Dalton. We are at our that little. <laughs> We're at our little local flea market in our hometown of Chiefland, Florida, and it's the winter. And typically, our flea market is better in the winter because we get snowbirds. So, even though it's 80 degrees right now in December, snowbirds are still here. So, and that's why they're here. Let's go see what we can find. All right, so we stopped to check out the outside booths first. This is actually a dealer that buys and resells just like I do, but she only sells in person, I believe. And I actually have found a Florenza piece with her before. I had to pay 25 so I would always check out her jewelry after finding that one really, really good piece. But this time, as far as the necklaces, she was wanting 10 and I don't think that I would be able to make much. However, this one is a really, really pretty copper wrapped amethyst. And that one she only wanted $5 for. So I'm looking to see if she has marked pieces. Because again, I have found one there. Even though I don't find very many often. And she had a bunch of pretty rings. But I think they were all costume I don't think she had any sterling silver. And as far as rings, I do typically try to stick to sterling unless they're really impressive. Now, she had a bunch of really, really cute animal brooches and pins here. But she was wanting $5. And I try not to pay more than $2 for them. Just because they will typically sell for about $8 to $12. So, paying 5 is definitely too much. But I'll try and talk her down because it is a great price if you're a collector and it's just not enough room if you're a reseller. So looking through all of her glass cases, this one was a beautiful brooch, but she did want $10 for that. So she had a lot of things that I really liked. The prices were just a little higher than what I would be able to pay and still make a profit. So I ended up only getting the amethyst chain from her and then I decided to look and see what else she had as well because she finds some really great prices. I like the flamingo but again I think five was just a little too much for me being that I am trying to resell it. So we're going to walk around the rest of the table see what she has that is not jewelry and over here she has some really really cute pieces and this caught my eye immediately if you do not know this is a carved fetish piece and she said she only wanted three dollars this one is probably worth 30 to 50 so i told her i would definitely get that one and then do you see it down there on the left yet if you don't you will in a second this was a cute cute cast iron kitty cat and I thought about getting it but then I decided I would leave that there but this here if you do not know is a Leo Ward Bluebird of Happiness it is signed and she wanted five dollars and that is about the max I pay for those they typically sell for an average of fifteen dollars so paying twelve I was okay this crab was really cool. It said it was from Paradise, like D-I-E-S. I have not heard of that brand. Really cute, though. It opened to a trinket box, but I decided that I would leave it there. And Dalton, Dalton found me a leaf. All right. Now we are in another booth. And I actually have found some left-in shakers from the same dealer. So these are really, really cute. Coca Pelli salt and pepper shakers these were three dollars for the set they did have the shelves marked different prices as far as the cost of the shakers and i think i should be able to get 12 to 15 for those the little gingerbread ones are actually cute too i didn't see those while i was there and these are little moon moonshine jugs i thought about getting those and at three dollars it was an absolutely great price but i decided i would skip them we are now in the back of the booth and this is an amazing 
Winnie the Pooh and Tigger piece. Now I picked it up, flipped it over. It is the Danbury Mint. Now it does need a little bit of cleaning, but this is an absolutely wonderful piece. If you do not know, some Dan Danbury Mints can be worth hundreds of dollars. And I will tell you at the end of the video what this one is worth. And I am going to leave the audio in when I asked her the price of this. Because this Winnie the Pooh is actually the most valuable piece I found. Dalton was checking out some bracelets there, but we did not get those. So now I am going to go and ask how much for this Winnie the Pooh piece. Let mommy see how much this is. Snoopy is cool, huh? How much is this? I'm doing 10. I have the box. Okay, I'll take it. And then I got these. Hey. <laughs> hey. So the poo was only $10. And then I saw this cute little owl toothpick holder really really cute with the blue it wasn't marked but it was only a dollar so i did pick that one up and i saw also these rolling stones vinyl coasters i think these will actually go for 30 dollars after i look them up 25 to 30 so that was a great pickup all right we are now in another booth we went to another booth and this pillow stood out to me it is actually a harris tweed woven pillow and it's pretty continuous it is stitched on the side but whenever i see any woven items i definitely check them out closer and look at this handkerchief sign they were two dollars but now they are only a dollar really cute quebec and we are going to dig through this basket. So what I look for with handkerchiefs is the colorful ones. You can see I'm pulling out the ones with floral designs. This one is super cute. This is a little Dutch handkerchief. And at a dollar, that is a great price. These should sell for $12 to $20 each, which is an absolutely great markup. You do need to watch to the end of the video because... The, there's something special about these handkerchiefs. So here is another one with a pretty floral pattern. And I typically pull all of the color out of these. So if you came by one of these baskets after I had been there, you wouldn't find much. So the dealer with the handkerchiefs actually told me I should go back to the booth I had just left. So now we are back where I got the Winnie the Pooh. And if you see, this says Pussycat Visits London. These are vintage 1960s, 1970s little Lefton nursery rhyme figurines. This one is the Blackbird and the Pie. And they're all little tiny figurines for different nursery rhymes. And... I couldn't find much on these. I still have some research to do on them. He had originally told me that if I got them all, that he would give them to me for $10 a piece. Here's Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater. These are just so cute. And I didn't see them because they were in the case, in their boxes. None of them were out. And so I didn't notice them. The Hey Diddle Diddle, the Cat and the Fiddle. So... With these, I was looking for damage. One of these was damaged, but I think that I can fix it. And he did end up decreasing the price for me because I wasn't able to find much info. And I felt like $10 was a little high to pay for each set. So we did end up agreeing on a price of $6 per set. So I paid $30 for all five of these. You can see I keep opening and closing and opening and closing. And again, I'm just looking to make sure they aren't broke. And I did find the one little bit of damage. And if you know the nursery rhymes these are from, I think I, I only know Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater, the Blackbird Pie, and that is it. So if you know the other, oh, and Hey Diddle Diddle the Cat and Fiddle. So if you know the names of any of these other nursery rhymes, Definitely let me know. You can see Dalton was out back petting their dog. Her name was Mia. Dalton absolutely loves 
animals and Dalton and Mia were playing back there. So I did end up getting these. I'll show you them a little bit closer at the end of the video with the rest of my haul. Mom. All right. Now we are back to the original booth. It's really cool. The dealer knows that I'm a reseller and she brought me down to show me those leftins to make sure I didn't miss them. And at her booth, this is the 1952 or actually 1951 Japan ashtray. I ended up leaving that there. I also saw this Hager planner. Now, the thing with the Hager planner, it was only $3. It did have its original Royal Hager sticker, but this is a really small, really plain pot. I'm glad I decided to put it back because they actually only sell for about $10. So I would not have wanted to pay $3 into $10. And then this is a really, really cool hand-painted Nippon or Limoges plate. It does have the sections for the eggs. This one is not marked. You can see here on the back but a lot of the older ones are not. This is definitely Victorian style, and I feel like I should be able to get good money for this. Now, she had it marked at $15, and she did end up giving me a discount of half off. The little egg sections there look small, so if, you, if this is something other than an egg plate, please let me know if you know I, I I would be interested. Now, this is a really cute stackable mushroom mug made in Japan. Really, really mid-century modern. But the reason that I end up putting this back is because there's only one. And with stackable mugs, I really like to have at least two, but four. I had to show you guys this because it reminded me of me. All right, now I went back for a third time to the booth where I got the poo, and I saw this duck planner. I actually had turned it over, or it's a croc, sorry, not a planner. It is Louisville stoneware, and they wanted 10. They sell for about 60 to 80. Unfortunately, at the end, I did find some damage, and I will show you that, but this was our last pickup at the flea market. All right, so we found some good stuff at the flea market, that Louisville stoneware duck should go for like 50 to 80 dollars i paid 10 and we found that little nursery rhyme left in figurines i have to do a little more research on them but those were really really cute so now we're on the way home and we just saw a yard sale sign so let's go see if there's anything here all right so this was actually the second yard sale we stopped at the first did not have anything so I ended up deleting that footage. Now here it says fabric. Now these are little like cut out and stuff, little do it yourself crafts. And I tend to do well with these. And I did look these up after the fact and they do sell for about $10 per panel. So I got the three of them for $2. So I'm less than a dollar in each and they should sell for about $10 each. So watch for fabrics and little ones like that where they're panels that you have a do-it-yourself craft on. I have had really good luck with those. They don't sell for a ton, but they do sell. Now here, these Glade refills would be good for resale, but I like to use these in my house. So I actually was interested in those for myself versus just for the house. And you know, I always check the tumblers because if you happen to find a Yeti cheap at a yard sale, you could make a really, really big profit. Now, over here, they had this rack with shirts. There were some really vintage looking shirts on here. And you'll see as I pull them out closer, this one is permanent press. They're kind of almost a Western style, probably if I had to guess from the 80s, but there are some really, really cool patterns. So I did ask her how much they were, and she told me five for $10. So $2 each. I love the stripes, and this one has a texture as well. It was another permanent press, and I am going to show you the tags up close of the ones that I did buy once we get to the end of the video. So you will see a complete haul from the flea market as well as this garage sale there was another one that was a Western shirt and I am looking at tags that I know are vintage 
look at this. This is a very, very classic vintage. And I think that one will sell well. So these shirts, when I can find them for a dollar or two, I definitely pick them up if they have a good pattern or a good look to them. Now here you can see there are more clothes folded. And I also saw this brand new pair of Crocs. Unfortunately, the Crocs were priced at $15. New, they run about $50, but they sell only for about $30 on eBay. And so paying $15, there really is absolutely no room for profit. So I'm glad I left them. I did not have signal to look up anything while I was at this sale. And I didn't see any brands of jeans that kind of stood out to me. And you guys can let me know if there's something I did miss. But this red gingham pearl snap on the bottom of the stack really stood out to me. This one is authentic Western wear. Definitely a vintage piece. And then on the bottom, I saw this Florida Gators sweatshirt. And this one is Lee brand, Lee Sport. And it was only a dollar. So I had to get that one. And then, you know, we got to check out the purses. So up front here, this kind of looks like a Vera Bradley, but it's actually a Stone Mountain. And it is brand new with the tags. And I believe she had $3 on this one. Yes, $3 for brand new with the tag Stone Mountain. So I picked that one up and I absolutely love this Starfish one. This had a $5 price tag, but there was an original tag on it. The original price was $48. This is Kim Rogers brand. And this was a very, very pretty purse. Sorry for all my moving around. I was showing you the $49 price there. And last but definitely not least was this amazing Lily Bloom purse. So this is a Lily Bloom Easter purse. And Lily Bloom does some holiday versions. So this one should definitely sell well. Now, over on the table, I did pick up one of the dinosaur seats for Dalton. He said he wanted that. And on the back of this table here, this is a brand new Little Tykes. It was $4. This one is actually not vintage. It does look vintage, but it was from 2006. And there is only one listed in the UK for $30. All right. So first from the flea market, I got this Harris Tweed pillow and this one it says hand woven in the outer Herades. this one is probably worth about 35 to 40 dollars i paid one dollar the poo is a danbury mint i only paid 10 i think i should be able to get about 100 or so for that that was a great pickup and then this duck i paid 10 but I did not notice he has been repaired, if you see here. So I probably can still get about 40 for him, but I was hoping to get 70. He has a Louisville stoneware. I paid five for the Leo Ward Bluebird. Dalton wanted this $2 cobalt blue for candy. This cute little owl toothpick holder, not marked. I got that for one. And then the Coco Pelli shakers were $3. And then I got this beautiful copper wrapped amethyst. Really, really like this one. I did pay five for that one. That will probably be on one of my whatnots. I am going to give away all of the handkerchiefs I picked up. So this will be the giveaway for this week. Put hankies, H-A-N-K-I-E-S, and you will be entered. I might, this, I only paid three. This is actually a fetish wolf, and I might give that to Brad for Christmas because he likes some of my fetish necklaces. Then I got these Rolling Stone coasters for three. They actually gave me this fan. It is absolutely beautiful vintage fan. And then these are all left in. So this one's Hey Diddle Diddle. Um, I'm not sure what the little girl is. That's Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater. There is the little girl with the cat. And then this is like the blackbird pie. So I paid 30 for all five of those. I paid six each. I've got to research these. They do have the original left in sticker on the box. And I just, I've got to research those a little more. And the last thing was this beautiful Nippon egg plate. I'm not sure about this. I paid 750. She gave me half off. But it could be 
could be valuable. Now let's go ahead and look at what I brought home from the yard sale. All right, so I got this Lily Bloom Easter purse for $3, which this is a good time of the year, I think, to be picking it up. I will probably put these three purses on whatnot. This one is a Kim Rogers, very pretty, new with tags, starfish purse. And then this is a new Stone Mountain purse. Now, I did pay five for the Duck Commander collection, and I should not have. This is only going to sell for eight after fees. It might be a little bit of a loss. What made me pick it up is it had a $69.99 price tag. It is sealed, but it is still not, not worth much. So that was a bad buy let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of what i got all right last i got this box of glade plug-in refills for only ten dollars i probably will keep these for me but it's crazy because those refills are like i want to say five bucks a pack and i got well over 10 packs so i probably will keep those for me after research i didn't see any comps on this little tykes click and play camera and then these are fold and cut spring mills it looks like they should sell for 10 each i got three of them for two dollars so they should sell for about 30 and then i got these vintage shirts so this one's mcgregor this one is perma press king's road shop vintage sears permanent press all of them are vintage they should go for about 15 each i paid two this one's a montgomery ward sterling ivy shop really cool gingham on these two and then this one's authentic western shirt from jc pennies this is a vintage lee florida gators shirt so not too bad because i should make about ten dollars each on these so that's 60 this one will probably be another 20 80 another 20 after fees there so about a hundred to 120 dollars in profit there so not bad so again if you want to join the giveaway for this week it will be for the handkerchiefs put hankies in the comments i appreciate you all watching i will see you all on monday on the nurse flippers what sold